So not only did we get a ban list update today, but we also got our beautiful Black Luster Soldier in the mail. Let's dive on all into this, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here. I just woke up not too long ago, so I'm not going to be in the most excited of moods, but destroy the ever living boo boo stain, all that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher, the 1400 ladder, I'm sorry if you hear any noise in the background. I just ordered myself a brand new chair, and by myself, I mean my parents because I could kind of care less. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to talk about a couple things. We got an update on the ban list of all things, and then I figured I would go ahead and incorporate that we got this in the mail and talk about why I decided to do this and invest basically $600 into this, even just for a PSA 8. I know that the camera that I have is not uh, amazing, and I'm sure some people are going to give me flack for that, as I have other people done that in the past. Um, I'm still trying to work on finding a better webcam. I did get a nice HD looking one a while back, but then it didn't work on my PC for whatever reason. It was just a you know, USB plug and play and it didn't do anything. Um, and my phone's been having issues uh, making videos recently, so I need to get that sorted out. Um, but anyways, besides all that, we got an update from Konami on their Twitter because enough of us bitched and complained. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it on the channel or not, but like I was just trolling Konami on their Twitter. Like they were talking about the the prizes that you can win at nationals with like your tickets and stuff. And I'm like, can we win a ban list? Like, and a lot of people were doing this kind of stuff on Twitter. And so finally they came out and said, look, late August, we're going to be putting out a ban list update. We want to see what uh, deck creativity there's not going to be any creativity. What that looks like post Infinite Forbidden. And of course, everybody's like, there's not going to be any creativity, but okay, sure. They want to sell their product. They are a company, they're a business, they want to make money, but you got to look at the pauses. And I even made a comment to them on Twitter and was like, look, thank you for being communicative. Like, this is what we want as a community. Tell us these kind of things. You know, even if it's a month out, even though we got to be in this tier zero format for another month, at least we know what's going to happen. They're going to give us a list around late August is what they said. So they could reveal it sooner. They could reveal it in, I don't know, uh, a month from now, uh, August 10th. And then it goes into effect like 10 days later. They could do something like that. So August is the magical month, probably around like the 10th of August, about 30, 31 days or whatever from now. We will hopefully at least have an idea of closer to a time when the list will be. Or at the very least, we're going to be close to a list. We'll know what the list is. That's really what's going to be nice, right? Um, and it goes to show that, like, they're probably working on this list, like, you know, a few months out in advance. Like, they kind of know what's coming down the pipeline. They know, like, certain things that they want to hit. And then once we get Infinite Forbidden, or, well, yeah, I guess once we get Infinite Forbidden in the last next couple weeks, um, then they're really going to start looking at what does well at Nationals. And then they'll start hitting stuff. So... Could we see Fiendsmith cards get hit? I wouldn't say that it's out of the realm of possibility. You know, you look at something like Super Heavy Samurai, uh, where they hit the Link Monster right when they got the Pendulum stuff. And literally, when you look at pie charts from when the deck first came out, it was either Cash Tira or Super Heavy. There was nothing in between. It was <laughs> it was actually really crazy. And it, ugh, it, was, it was rough. It was really rough for like a very short amount of time. But anyways... <sighs> Thank you, Konami, for telling us when we're getting this list. Like that that is all that we have ever wanted as a community is to just know when this list is coming out. Give us an idea. We know that now August is the magical time. We can sit back, we can relax, we can, you know, test, you know, White Woods and all this other stuff like what I'm doing in preparation for what next format's gonna look like. And what's nice too is that since we know we're gonna be getting a ban list in August, you can pretty much get stuff at least some stuff out of info and kind of feel like you're fine, right? Like you can get the Exodia stuff, that stuff's not going to get hit. You can get a Whitewoods core, Whitewoods is not going to get hit. Whitewoods is good, but honestly, it just kind of loses to Nib and Droll, even though Nib doesn't really exist right now. Um, yeah, like I think, I think if you were to invest in info, I don't think it's a bad idea. It's just if you're going to be picking up stuff like Fiendsmith cards and like Beatrice and Wave Hiking and all that, a lot of that shit's going to probably get banned. Now, to tie this in with what I've been doing while waiting for a ban list, uh, don't worry, all this does tie in together. I'm not just trying to change the subject, so don't click off. You know, uh, you, you should be watching till the end. Why did we 
pick up a PSA 8 BLS. Now, according to the listing, it is off center um, because you can tell that one side of the black lines is bigger compared to the other ones. Um, and apparently there's a nick in like one of the top corners here. Um, you can't really see it unless like you have a, a 100 times magnifying glass. But why did we get this? We got this because in the the time that we've been waiting for a van list, as I've talked about on the channel before, I've really been into investing in like collector stuff. If you remember, we got the stainless steel Egyptian gods. We got the Kaiba briefcase, which the briefcase has paid for itself. Those briefcases are like 1200 sealed. The blue eyes, um, platinum secret rares, whatever that were in the briefcase are like anywhere from a thousand to $2,000 for the set. Um, the 61 card deck that I have sealed is like over a thousand dollars. Like the, the whole briefcase, you were to separate everything and sell it out, right? You're looking at like three to five grand, which is not bad. And you have something like this that I, I don't know if this is like frowned upon, but worst case, if you can't get rid of this PSA 8, you could always just take it out of the PSA grading and turn around and sell it for like $2,000 a few years down the road. Like that's not a big deal. Apparently in the PSA community, they only get like nines or tens. That's what they prefer to have in their collection and not eights or lowers. But again, I don't know if it's frowned upon. You pop it out of the case, you put it in a sleeve, and then like another protective sleeve, like you just double, triple, quadruple sleeve it, sell it for two grand a few years down the road, and you're good. We've also invested in like the sealed 25th anniversary boxes because at the end of the day, to me, it's like when a lot of people are up, are upset with the game right now, and people really want a balance, they want the power creep to really be adjusted and to uh, not torn back, but sort of reeled in. Um, a lot of times, someone like me at least falls back on collecting, where the game is just really dead right now. People don't want to play in this format for another month. They don't want to play in it for another five minutes, but at least now we have some sort of end date uh, that we can kind of look forward to for when this madness will be over. But then also, kind of playing the market a little bit and investing in stuff to know that you know, in a year, three years, five years worth of time, stuff's going to be worth money. This BLS, you could only get through the sweepstakes when you bought the Egyptian God stainless steel. And those were made to order, whereas the BLS, there was only 2,000 of them ever made. So, uh, yeah, this is going to go up over time. You know, you give it five years, this thing's going to be worth money. Even a PSA 8, someone could probably sell for like 10 grand. There's someone on TCG Player right now trying to sell this, not graded, for 10 grand. And it's actually kind of funny. I'm sure other listings would populate, but... Um, it's funny to see how like on eBay, people are selling it for like 700, 800, 1200 dollars. And then you got the one random dude on TCG player selling his for 10 grand and it's not even graded. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy that I got this. It completes our Egyptian God like collection because now we've got the stainless steel plus we have the BLS graded. Um, again, I'm sure some people are going to say, Avery, why would you even get an eight? Like I could have gotten ungraded one for 700. Um, but you know, that one could have been worse. Like it was just in the little packaging that Konami sent them in, which was something else too, that like the, the stainless steel Egyptian gods were so nice, but then you send this in like a little, like how you get the lost arts and they're in the little p packaging like that. That's what these were sent in. Um, obviously mine wasn't, it's in the PSA grading thing, but you know, that's, um, that's neither here nor there, but <sighs> it's something to do while we wait for a pan list. And this has definitely been <clears throat> the worst format of all time in my 16 years of playing. Um, I was actually just talking with a buddy of mine, shout out to Valley D as always. He said that um, this is going to be the most tier zero of tier zero formats. And I agree because even tier element, I would argue at this point, wasn't this bad. Like they, they had their thing that they were known for doing, which was milling a bunch of cards. If you hit them with shifter, if they didn't have Herald of Orange Light, they weren't playing. Whereas like if you hit Snake Eye with Shifter, they at least still have plays that they can do. You know, uh, yeah, if you Shifter them and they can't do their Fiendsmith lines, like okay, like any deck can brick. But it's just so deadly consistent at this point that it doesn't really matter. So top 32 expected to be like all Snake Eyes. Maybe one White Woods Runic or something or like one Runic stun, like who knows. But 
I'm happy that we at least know when this nightmare is going to end. In the meantime, I'm going to keep collecting cards and just looking at the market. And if you too want to get into collecting, I am selling a PSA 8 <laughs> Black Luster Soldier for, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll start the bidding at $2,000. Let's put this puppy on the market for two grand. let us uh, Let's see what happens. Or I also have an ungraded one <laughs> that I keep in a PSA thing. Uh, we're selling that one for 5000 <laughs> Guys, even when the format's bad, there are still ways that you can make money. And just chill out and enjoy the game for what it is. Like I said, I'm messing around with White Woods because why not? You know, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens on this balance. And especially if they do hit things out of Infinite Forbidden a month after it's been released. Guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.